You probably remember from high school geometry that the area of a triangle can be found by taking one half times the base times the height of that triangle. So if we have a triangle that looks, for example, like this, and we know the height of that triangle and the length of the base of the triangle, then we can use this formula. But what if we don't know the height of the triangle? What if instead we know an angle, like this one right here? I'm going to call it theta. Remember that when we drop a vertical, we often do so so that it creates a right angle with the opposite side. So I'm going to make sure that that's annotated so that we're, we're sure that this is a right triangle. And then I can take a look at this, this angle here, theta, and say that the sine of theta is equal to the opposite. Now I'm looking at this triangle right here. The side opposite is the height. So to say that the sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse is to say that the sine of theta is h over whatever the length of this side is here. Why don't we call that c? And the main reason for that choice is consistency with your textbook. That implies that the angle opposite that, opposite that side is capital C, or as your textbook calls it, gamma. We're in the process of trying to figure out what this is because to write the sine of theta as the opposite over the hypotenuse, we need at least to have labels for those things. So if the opposite is the h, then now the hypotenuse of this particular triangle is c. We have sine equals op opposite over hypotenuse. I've just noticed actually that your textbook calls this angle alpha. So I'm just going to rename the angle alpha, and now we have sine of alpha as h over c. Now this might be a little bit confusing at this point because I still have b labeled here and I still have h labeled here, but the implication with this, lab with this formula here is that we know both b and h. In the case of the formula that I'm about to show you, we're assuming that we know b, but we do not know h. We know one of the angles instead. If I take this expression for sine, oh dear me, <laughs> that's a bit of a mess. I take this expression for sine, sine equals h over c, and I uh, multiply both sides by c, then I will get c times the sine of alpha equals h. So now I have a different way to express h. I can write it as c sine of alpha. So I'm going to replace this h in the formula with c sine of alpha. So another way to find the area of triangle is 1 half times the base times c times the sine of alpha. This would be a good formula for you to add to your note card. I want to point out that this implies that we know uh, the length of b and that we know the length of c, but that's not the same as knowing the height. Can we find the height just from the lengths of these two sides? Not directly, no. Uh, but we, we can find this height sort of indirectly by knowing the sine of this, of this angle here. If we don't know the sine of this angle, we can take the sine of this angle to help us find the area of the triangle. Undoubtedly, we could find all, you could use all of this to find the height. The, the point is that with our original formula from geometry, we have a value for b and we have a value for h. We're given those values. And with known values for b and h, we can just plug them in. With this formula, we don't need a value for h, or we don't have a value for h, but if instead we have a value for c and a value for alpha, then we can, we can still find the area of the triangle. Now it's important to point out that what we have here are the length of the side c, the length of the side b, and the size of angle alpha. So that is a side angle side setup. If instead we had, for example, the length of the side b, the size of the angle alpha, and the length of a side a, that wouldn't give us the, the information we need to find the area directly, because now we have the sine of alpha is the height, sine of alpha is the height over, over c. 
right? If we don't know C, if we know A instead, well, we can't use this formula. We, we, we don't know C, so we can't find the sine of alpha, so we can't plug sine of alpha into our formula. So you have to have side angle side, a side, then the next thing you run into is an angle, next, the next known piece of information is an angle, and the next again known piece of information is another side. They don't have to be in this orientation. For example, you could have, let's see if I can draw a really weird triangle. You could have this side, this angle, and this side. Or you could have this side, this angle, and this side. As long as it's side and then angle and then side of all, those are the three pieces of information you know you're given. The, the area of this triangle is going to be one half times the length of B times A times the sine of alpha, uh, gamma in this case. So going back to this triangle, notice that I could take 1 half times the uh, length of B times the length of C times the sine of alpha, or I could take 1 half times the length of C times the length of B, because multiplication is commutative. So all I really need to do is take 1 half, multiply it by the sine of alpha, and then multiply the lengths of the two sides either side of alpha. So here I wrote that I have B times A, B times A, the lengths of the two sides, and then I'm going to take the sine of the, of the angle inside, of between these two, the included angle. Okay, let's do a, an ex example problem. I'm going to erase some of this information here. I'll leave my generic triangle there, and I'll leave the formula where it is. And let's find the area of a triangle with the following measurements. This is from your textbook. At the end of the section, there are exercises, and this is exercise number 28. And we're going to find the area of a triangle with these measurements. Now remember, it's important that we have the lengths of two sides and the measurement of the included angle, not some other angle. So this angle is between these two. And so how can we tell from uh, these measurements what information we actually have? Here's my triangle. It's not to scale. I have absolutely no I'm, I'm just drawing a random triangle, my measurements probably won't really match the, the actual angle sizes at all. Um, if I were doing this for a presentation or for a paper, I would take care to make my angle measurements at least approximately correct, at least proportionately correct, but because I'm doing scratch work here, it doesn't really matter. If you were doing this on a challenge set, I might expect a little bit more accuracy. One thing I've noticed is that I have lengths B and C, so I'm going to label my sides A, B, and C and I know B, and I know C. If those are my angles, sorry, if those are my sides, then I know my angles are alpha, beta, and gamma. And I've been given alpha. I've been given the angle alpha. So in fact, the implication by the naming convention of angles and sides being the same letter across from each other, I actually have two sides and an included angle. So I don't really need this diagram. Um, I just threw it up here to show you that I, I know that I'm in the correct sort of situation here. I have a side angle side, in this, which is what I need in order to use this formula. OK, so I want the area of the triangle. I'm going to take 1 half times b times c times the sine of alpha, which is 28 degrees. It's sine of 28 degrees. Some of this I can do by hand. Ultimately, I'm going to have to resort to my calculator because the sine of 28 degrees, 28 is not a common angle. So I've done as much as I can by hand because that gives me exact values. Now I'm going to go to my calculator and get a value for the sine of 28 degrees. The calculator on my phone gives me 0 0.469. How much can I fit in here? 4715, I'll go to 47, that's five places. It actually gives me, I don't know, it looks like about 15 places, which is great. But I'm not going to write them all down. That last one's a 7. 
I'm not going to write them all down, but I am going to save them in my memory, um, or at least to take the uh, display that's on my screen right now, which is, I'm actually going to count these. I was right, there are 15 decimal places in my calculator display. That's awesome. So that's a high level of accuracy. It's still not exact value, but it's a high level of accuracy. So I'm just going to say that that's showing on my calculator times 44. So even though I only wrote down five decimal places, I'm using 15 decimal places to get the do the computation here. And the answer I get is 20.656. Seven four eight, so seven five, and that will be my final answer here. That is the area to five decimal places of this triangle. Which triangle? This triangle, which I haven't actually sketched. I have a generic triangle here, and I have a sort of different generic triangle here. But I didn't really use either of these. I didn't use this. I didn't use this. I just used the values in my formula. Now I could have drawn a triangle, but I didn't really need it. So technically, this is all I need. Here's the problem, the question, and my solution. Now, the last subsection in this section is called Solving Applied Problems Using the Law of Signs. So that's our next video, and it'll be the last one for 8.1.